What is good, Internet? JB back here today with episode two of our new Titans franchise here on the Sports Channel. This week, we are here in week one to face the Jacksonville Jaguars in a divisional game already. So we got some important stuff to get out of the way. Beforehand, we got some practice to take care of. We got to set our season goal. And I got to give you guys an overview of the roster. And we might even take a quick little look at the draft class just to see what's up. You know, just basically a year out. So let's go ahead and start off with our season goal. This isn't the strongest division in the league. The Texans are, uh, and the Jags both finished 11 and six last year. Ourselves and the Colts finished, I want to say four and something. I don't remember what the Colts finished. We finished four and 13. I want to say the Colts were very similar to us though. I don't remember, uh, but either way, I think winning is the division is out of the question. We could sneak in as a wild card spot. But we're gonna we're gonna go moderate. We're gonna play it a little bit safe, and we're gonna say seven wins. This is a building year. This is a see what we have year, and I think next year is gonna be a big go for it year. Because our team isn't phenomenal, obviously. You know, we're coming off a really terrible season, but we have some pieces. We have some stuff we can do. So let's go ahead and go over opening day keys as well. Uh, it's opening day this week, and a fresh start for every team around the league. You'll be facing the Jags. What's the key to victory? Dominating offense or stifling defense? I think the defenses are st the strength of this team, but that's not saying a lot because we're uh, we're living in a post Derrick Henry world, so I don't know how good our offense is gonna be. But I'm gonna I'm gonna have confidence confidence rather in my year two quarterback. We're gonna have confidence in Will Levis to say we're gonna get him going. We're gonna see what he can do. He's gonna go out there and he's gonna win us this game because he's the guy. Beat the Jags with over 350 yards. Well. You know, that's a lot of yards. I think we could maybe sneak out with a win. Come out with an upset in week one on the road. But going for 350 yards, that, that's a lot of yards. Now, before we head into weekly strategy and the roster, I do want to show you guys quickly the draft class. So top 10 prospects, there's a few QBs in there, two, three to be exact. A uh, middle linebacker, Bobby Green, looks like a couple of tackles as well, and then a few outside linebacker pass rushers. So, you know, we could potentially be in the market for a QB, could also be looking at a tackle. We have a bridge starter at tackle, and then maybe, you know, Will Levis just isn't the guy. Here's how I went ahead and set up the uh, scouts. So the strengths of the region are QB, wide receiver, and corner. I feel like you can mostly know about QBs without having to, you know, invest your national scout into them. But uh, so I went ahead and scouted receiver and corner. Two positions we probably won't be targeting super high in the draft, but always, you know, good play positions to have a lot of depth at. And if there's a freaky, you know, we'll obviously look at it. But yeah, we went ahead and did that for our national scout. And then West, that's where all the QBs are. So we put our tier two scout on QBs. There's uh, the top two guys and then two more top 10 guys. So four of the top 10. Uh, prospects in the class are all QBs from the West region, so I feel like that made sense. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a QB tackle, um, uh, tier two scout, or even a QB uh, defensive end tier two scout, so we couldn't get uh, Jesse Martinez to tackle or even another strength of the region. Uh, and then central, we have running back and tackle, so yeah, again, we don't necessarily need our running back, but you know, if there's a good one, you never know. Northeast, we have outside linebacker safety. And then Southeast, we have D tackle, but a linebacker, which is where Bobby Green is. And I'm intrigued because there's a top five uh, player in last year's draft that was a middle linebacker. He went to the Patriots and he ended up having like 90 speed, big hitter and uh, superstar X factor. So uh, yeah, I'm intrigued. There's also another one, uh, Martin Garrett. So a couple pretty good middle linebackers. We'll go ahead and check out the region prospects or see if there's uh, any guys we do have a little bit of percent on and we do. So Theo Toon, potential number one pick, 6'4", 230 out of Fresno State. First look at him, and he looks to be the guy. All right, great to elite throw power, strength, acceleration, change of direction, good to great speed, jumping, and agility. Theo Tune could be unbelievable. Be a throw on the run, probably an enterprise record type, and he looks like he could be one of the best QBs I've seen, uh, just based on the very little we know about him. Doug Bohan, the other QB we know quite a bit about, he is six foot two twenty six from Oregon, has a medium accuracy. We already know that, so you can throw the ball a little bit. And he has great to elite throw power and strength. Not re really an athlete, so probably a field general archetype. We'll find out more as the season goes on, I'm sure. And then Bobby Green out of NC State. I'm actually excited for this. He's six two 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 twenty five, only twenty two years old, and uh, you have to be a freak to be this highly rated as a uh, middle linebacker. I would hope. 
Great to elite. Everything except strength, which is poor to marginal. Well, he's an insane athlete, but not the strongest guy. So probably just an unbelievable cover linebacker, which... Listen, if there's a generational player, I don't care what the position is. I'm interested. <laughs> I don't really want to go over too many of these guys. We'll take a quicker look at Ty Milstead. Probably just gonna... He's not even a good athlete, so he's already off the board. Jesus. Uh, Chris Crawford, another QB. Uh, this one out of BYU, 6'2", 228. B deep accuracy. He has a noodle. He's the only one without great to elite throw power so far. Absolute wet noodle of an arm. <laughs> uh, Jeff Jacobs. Now, here's an athlete at, at pass rusher. I'm already intrigued. And... All right, yeah, we'll just round out the top 10 with the other guy we have a little bit of percent on. That is going to be Jamie DeMarco out of Colorado. 6'4", 225, A throw under pressure. Could we have another improviser here? Oh my god. Only good to great throw power, but he's an unbelievable athlete. Wow. Wow. Great to elite, excel, agility, change of direction, good to great jumping, and speed. And throw power, but oh my god, Jamie DeMarco. <laughs> This is going to be a very fun QB class to follow, and I'm excited to learn more about these prospects. Listen, Will Levis, I'm not saying you're, um, the, you know, the, the clock is running on your career, but you're going to need to show us something if we got prospects like these. <laughs> I swear this wasn't planned, but I just got a notification for it on my phone. Uh, I have a G Fuel code for my other channel, link in the description, by the way. So if any of you guys over here on the sports channel are interested in getting yourself some G Fuel this fine Black Friday season, go ahead and use my code JBFuel at checkout. They have a huge buy one, get one going on. So, you know, hey, you want some G Fuel? I got a code for you. Okay, before we get into weekly strategy, I do want to let you guys take a look at the team. If you missed last episode, we went over, we went all the way through the offseason, you know, draft, free agency, all that sort of stuff. So this is a new look Titans team. No DeAndre Hopkins. No Derrick Henry. Those guys requested a trade in this universe. So let's see what the team is looking like heading into 2024. Uh, we have Will Levis at QB. Ty J Spears, Antonio Gibson, Cordero Patterson are a trio at running back. We had a uh, we had a rookie who I was excited to get a lot of snaps. Um, and that's why we ha even have Cordero Patterson for mentor tag. Not that he's a bad player, obviously, but we had a guy, Antoine Chase on. But he uh, tore his rotator cuff in preseason and is going to miss pretty much the entire season. So that's a little bit unfortunate. I was very much looking forward to seeing how he could perform. But that's okay. We don't we don't need him. No, we, we, we totally don't need that guy. Not even a little bit. But looking at the rest of the team, we of course have Will Levis, who's playing up to a 73 overall these days with 96 throw power. Got a couple throw power upgrades last episode and, you know, high... Uh, 78 medium accuracy, 80s for deep and short. Good athleticism. So he has all the tools. He just needs to put it all together and show that he can be the guy. Our round one pick at number six. We had six and seven. We made a trade down to get two first round picks. Uh, Dwayne McGee, 6'5", 230 out of LSU, 80 overall. Um, got that as a 78, but got a couple of upgrades to the preseason. 89 speed is a little bit slow, but he's a very good route runner. Great jumping, great catch of traffic, great spec catch. We're going to be playing him at receiver one and see what he can do. Also, uh, it won't show auto where it would show, but we do know he did get in a, an ability slot when he got upgraded. So we know he has at least superstar dev. That's pretty cool. Brought in Rashid Tahid in free agency to add some speed to our receiver core. And then we saw Traylon Burks, who will be starting in the slot. We're not really demoting him. It's just, I want, you know, Rashid Shahid to be on the field in packages where we don't have speed necessarily because Dwayne McGee uh, and Traylon Burks are both really slow. So I want Shahid to get plenty of snaps. So that's why he's ahead of Burks in the depth chart. But Burks is our starting slot over in the specialist tab. Uh, we also brought in Devin Freeman, rookie center, rookie guard Franks, or rookie tackle. Drafted as a guard and moved to tackle Franks. And then defensively, uh, our other first round pick was Clay Staley out of West Virginia. Pretty dang good athlete. Unbelievable acceleration at 93, but solid block shed, solid hit power, solid finesse, solid tackle, solid pursuit. He's going to be very, very, very good. Our other top 10 pick. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We have a pretty sick pass rusher down here, Reggie Edwards. He's going to be backing up to Nico Autry. And then this is the other guy I'm most excited about, Darian Gallery, corner out of Washington State, 6'5", 206. 
with 91 speed and he had 84 man coverage coming out of the draft that is ridiculous a little bit low on excel and agility but with that coverage i think it more than makes up for it we also made a trade to clear up a log jam because we had christian fulton roger mccreary and uh caleb farley all vying for that cb3 position so we went ahead and just cleared up the log jam and got ourselves a guy we won't have to pay a long-term contract to as mccreary and um farley were both due for a contract this offseason so we went ahead and got keely ringo who we don't have to pay uh at least not yet 94 speed 96 excel he brings the speed that we don't really have at corner so thought that was a fine trade so that's pretty much what the roster is looking like still have a long time titans harold landry Amadi Hooker, Jeffrey Simmons, of course, the best player on the team, Tier Tart, Sean Murphy Bunting got brought back, uh, Monty Rice stepping up for more playing time this season, brought in Jeremy Chin in free agency, Nick Cross was sitting in free agency, brought him in, uh, special teams, we're going to have Cordell Patterson returning kicks, brought in Dicker the Kicker, specialist tab, we have Keely Ringo starting as our slot corner, Staley and Landry off the edge with Edwards getting a lot of snaps in there, Arden Key, just kind of a backup bull at this point, rotational guy, brought in James Houston as well, have uh simmons and tart up the middle al shair rice and chin are our sub linebackers i do kind of want to play jeremy chin more in a sub linebacker role just to get monty rice um uh, you know on the field a little bit so he's going to play ahead of him and then spears gibson and burks are our offensive specialists let's do some practice absolutely nothing of interest happened in practice let's see if we can't get through the day without any injuries we have a pcl sprain for left tackle jones i don't know who that is I'm gonna be honest so thankfully it's not a starter uh who is that i actually have no idea and then our defense looks to be fully healthy going in which is great who the hell is i want my brain my brain wants to go with will jones but i don't I don't know, that's not a person, unless it's a rookie, and I don't think we have one. I'm pretty sure it is a rookie. It almost has to be, because I can think of a W. Jones in the in the league, so... It is... I guess no one, all right. <laughs> sure. I guess he's actually not injured. I guess I guess I just made up the fact that someone got a PCL sprain. There's a practice for a guy, Wade Jones. All right. <laughs> I had no practice squad guys to get injured. Um, all right. Upgrades before the game. Uh, we just have one for Ty J Spears. What is going to go straight into elusive back, make him a better player? The man with no ACL. Has plus one awareness, plus two change of direction, and plus two juke. Nice upgrade heading into week one. God, if he had it, just not 88 speed, he'd be so sick. Ooh, looks like we might have a little bit of rain on the forecast today here in Duval. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe it's just the angle. Ah, that, that looks pretty cloudy. I don't care about Trevor Lawrence. I care about the clouds. <laughs> I love a good rain game. You see Coach Ikerson getting ready to lead his boys into battle. We'll go ahead and skip this. Does anyone really care? I don't know. Some of you might. And it looks like we'll be kicking off to start the season get ryan stonehouse out here to send it deep one of the strongest legs in the entire league newly minted startup punter which is absolutely criminal that he doesn't have it in real life or in the actual game by the way i don't know why yeah he's startup in real life you fucking idiot no he doesn't have it in the actual game which i think is ridiculous he's literally 99 kick power like give him startup at the very least he probably deserves superstar for being honest but that's neither here nor there. We have 84 overall Trevor Lawrence. Aggressive decision making. 87 speed is actually insanely high for Trevor Lawrence. Not that he's not fast, but 87? Bruh. Put him in Baltimore playbooks. See what can happen. Speaking of playbooks, I actually don't know what playbooks we're in. I think I've switched them. I don't remember. I guess we'll find out. Doesn't really matter. The first snap of the season is going to be Trevor Lawrence. Rolling out to his left. Completes the pass to Evan Ingram. And six. And that's a touchdown. Okay. Jeremy Chin able to trip him up. Um, six is the rookie who just completely ran right past him. Um, and I was just too dumbfounded to switch off. Harold Landry kind of gets pressure in. 56 whiffs. That's going to be uh, probably Monty Rice. And six just completely over pursues. Doesn't even go for the tackle. Oh boy. Oh boy. Really, really good start to the season. 
Really good start to the season. All the momentum already in Jacksonville's favor. Going to be a handoff to Travis Etienne. And he's going to walk past the Monty Hooker into the end zone for a touchdown. I don't know why it wouldn't let me actually engage going for the cut stick there, but it didn't. And Travis Etienne has a touchdown and the Jag score in two plays. Oh, boy. All right. <laughs> Definitely not the start you're looking for. Cordell Patterson on for the kick return. Actually a pretty good return up past the 25 out to the 27. We'll get a look at Will Levis and this offense, the Mayo Man. We had the Mailman last series. Now we have the Mayo Man, Will Levis. Taking the field for the first time this season. Got a bunch of new targets on offense. A couple new starters on the O-line. A few new starters on the O-line, actually. Looking to build off a semi-successful rookie year. Trying to prove to this team that he can remain the starter going forward. Uh, this is a very weak box. We're just going to go ahead and hand this off to... Uh, actually, it's going to be Antonio Gibson getting the first carry of the season. Picks up six. Kind of forgot he was on the team, not going to lie. That's a good start to our uh, offensive capabilities. Picking up six yards. I would love to run this away from Josh Allen, so we're going to run this away from Josh Allen. Oh, and no one blocks 33. No, that's uh, going to be Devin Lloyd just coming in untouched for the tackle. Just didn't even attempt to block this player. Have uh, two offensive linemen and a fullback that just ran my path. This game is so fucking bad. All right. Going to be third and four. Our play call, our play art is already fucked up. We're just going to go slants and just hope. Gonna roll out with Levis and try to hit Burks here, and he holds on. Trail on Burks. Complete for 17. Listen, if I'm gonna get trolled like I got trolled in the first snap of the season, I'm gonna run a little bit of slant cheese. Roll out, hit our guy. I'm okay with it. McGee is getting pressed at the line. If he beats press here, I'm gonna take a shot. He does over the top to McGee, and that's just an insane jumping swat. I mean, I gotta, I gotta turn on precision passing. I just have it on default because I want the ratings to uh, play for themselves, but I gotta be able to, you know, make that throw because that is wide open. We're gonna switch this up to play action here on second and long, and we're just gonna check down to Spears. Easy first and more. We'll just dunk out of bounds. Pick up twenty. On the check down. When your most effective way of moving the ball is the check down, you know you're in trouble. We'll keep this on the right side. Spears, a little bit of a speed burst, gets a couple. Got three tight ends on the field. See if any one of them can get open. It's gonna be Chico Conquo. He's gonna get open. He has speed to run to the end. So great block by McGee. Touchdown, Chico Conquo. Beautiful offense. And look at the rookie receiver going up and engaging with his man and making sure no one can stop Okonkwo from getting into the end zone. That is exactly what you want to see out of your rookie first jump pick. Okonkwo gets open, has the speed to just outrun Devin Lloyd in coverage, and then it's just powering through his safety into the end zone. Touchdown. Will Levis answers back in a big way. Unfortunately, they are going to keep all of the momentum, which I think is silly. Kicker the kicker on for the extra point and puts it through. T-Law and this high-powered Jags offense now back on the field. It looks like our defensive play art is also screwed up. Going to be another handoff inside to ETN. Gets hit by Monty Rats. Brought down by... I want to say that was Keely Ringo finishing off the tackle. It was. All right. Already doing better than the last drive. They didn't go for 60 on the first play of this one. So already an improvement. And if we keep, just keep them out of the end zone here, listen, we're a whole new team. We kept them out of the end zone, forcing them into a third down. I know it's not a high bar to cross, but we've already done better this drive than we did last drive. It'll be a QB draw, and Lawrence is going to break a Jeffrey Simmons arm tackle and pick up the first down. 
you, you just don't expect a Trevor Lawrence QB draw on third down. I mean, good play call, but it really wasn't. And yeah, he just insane block by is that Brendan Sheriff? 71. That's Bates. I don't know who Bates is. Might be a rookie. But just completely shutting down the best player on our team. What an effort. Trevor Lawrence picking up the first down with his feet on a designed QB run. So one thing if it's a, you know. Scramble. And that's gonna be an option to Arden Key over pursues. Trevor Lawrence killing us with his legs. I said put him in Baltimore playbook, and shit, I, I, t I take it back. Fucking stop. I have no idea who Arden Key's supposed to be on, so I'm just going to switch on to a D lineman. And that pass is incomplete. Good D. From Jeremy Chin and Aziz Al Shire. Going to bring up another second down for the Jags. Over the head of Alshair, complete for the first down. That's Evan Ingram in coverage against my corner. Evan Ingram, a glorified, glorified slot receiver anyway, but don't really want to see him outrunning my CB1. Arden Key gets getting picked on in coverage. I don't know why he's even on the field in coverage. He's not, he's like, he shouldn't really be on the field at all. But he's playing a lot and he's playing off ball. That is not what we want him doing, obviously. Put Brandon Smith in that role just so we have like an actual off ball linebacker. Because I don't know where in the playbook it's telling them, telling them to put our backup outside linebacker in coverage. Who's a pass rusher in a 3-4. A but I don't like that. Play action. Lawrence complete to Calvin Ridley down to the five. Starting off 4 or 5 for 105 yards, but don't worry. He has like 40 yards on the ground. And ETN has also uh, been unstoppable so far, so. Yep, that's cool. Lawrence rolling out. Fumble on the play as Harold Landry gets in for the strip sack. They're probably not going to call it a strip sack, but Lawrence goes down. Cam Robinson recovers the fumble and gets injured on the play. Huge play there by our best edge rusher, Harold Landry. He's on a long-term contract worth a lot of money. Need him to make plays like that, and he did. We're actually going to bring Heat again here if they're coming out of empty. And that should have been a touchdown as Monty Rice it cannot keep up with Evan Ingram. And here on... Starting goal from the 14, we are once again going to come out in man coverage. Just trust our guys. Here it's Hart, beats his man, and Lawrence forced out of the pocket and will throw it away, bringing up fourth and goal, and likely a touchdown as Clay Staley, our other top 10 pick, getting in there on the pressure at the end. We'll probably count as his first career pressure, I'd imagine. And the Jags will come out and kick the field goal. It is good. Second and forever after a huge tackle by. And that's intercepted. Oh, man, that was open, but I guess we just held onto the ball too long. Intercepted by Darius Williams. I got to throw the ball sooner, but I feel like it was more covered if I threw it sooner. You tell me if this is open because... We start the play and we see Darius Williams, who is over. He's the guy right in front of 18. I don't want to get off the ball. Um, and he's running with 18 is the guy who the guy who gets the interception is running with the guy with the red uh, armband. So I see Trayvon Walker trailing Rashid Shahid. I'm like, OK, this is open, right? Uh, I should have just waited one more second and thrown to It's like if I throw to or throw to McGee here, the safety comes down and makes a play. So I'm just going to trust, like, you know, the guy getting ran at by the pass rusher. And it ends up just being Darius Williams covering both routes. And he jumps it. So I don't know. Like Trayvon Walker trailing my 95 speed receiver, I, I think is open. But I, I guess I just read the read the play wrong, obviously. Good tackle by Monty Rice, preventing more than five yards. Throw it right at Monty Rice, but I just, it wouldn't like let me react. 
complete to Calvin Ridley for a first down. He literally threw it right at me, but I'm spamming Y and it just it doesn't react. Got to be an awareness rating thing or something. Going to be the last play of the first quarter here. Need another stop, team. I believe in you. Lawrence flushed out, complete to Ingram. Going to pick up five and that will be the end of the first quarter. They have way more plays than us and way more yards than us. So dominating time of possession and actually moving the ball better. So that's pretty cool. We're essentially not doing anything well, if you look at it in that regard. Third and five, first play of the second quarter. I'll show you flushes them out and it's going to be a sack by Monty Rice, cleaning it up, bringing up another fourth down. Great play call. By the defensive coordinator. He brought a full blitz. I'll show you ate up the one blocker, and then that left Monty Rice free to just storm at Lawrence and bring him down. Great play design. Great execution by the defense, forcing another field goal. Oh, Monty Rice gets injured on the kickoff. That's not cool. Getting worked on on the trainer's table. Worked on at the trainer's table. Oh boy, we need momentum back, dude. This shit is so broken. Well, hit Shahid. Good gain on first down. I don't know what this play is, but we're trying it. It's a weird, like... I don't know. <laughs> play action, we have a fullback involved. That's gonna be a hold. Sick. It's gonna be the rookie Devin Freeman. Bruised knee for Rice. We'll uh we'll put Brandon Smith in. They've been being they've been getting cute with their QB runs. Let's try it ourselves and see if we can't catch him napping. That's gonna be that's a face mask, surely. That's a face mask, right? Gotta be. That's gonna be another hold on the offense. Alright. This one on Terry Frank. So, rookie offensive lineman with back to back holds. And we're backed up to second and 22. And uh, in case, you know, you were wondering if we'd be able to actually run a play, no, we have no idea what the fucking uh, play actually is. But Traylon Burks does get open, picks up 21, so gets a lot of it back. The massive gain on second down now brings up third and one. Actually manageable. See if we can't get over the line with Spears. And he gets absolutely killed. Oh my god. Huge hit by Foley Fotokasi. Bringing up fourth and inches. If the touch poster were in the game, we would go for it. I think we're going to anyway. We're at least going to come out to go for it. We can always take a penalty. We don't like the look. But I don't want to give them the ball back. I feel like we can get inches and spears does get us the first down just kidding he fumbled jesus guys okay chico conquo recovers but could you maybe not fumble guy we're gonna try to get chico conquo again open we're gonna try to hit b here actually it's gonna be shaheed down the field what a throw by will levis on the run why did they get chico conquo open again down the field on one of those long developing routes but it ended up working out as shaheed just outruns the guy, and that's exactly why we brought him in. Levis rolling away from Josh Allen. And that's 95 speed Rashid Shahid. We're at number 22. Might need to change that. I believe in coverage against a linebacker, so. Most of the time, Shahid gonna win that. We did get a little bit of momentum back from that. I'm gonna put Okonkwo just on a streak. Try to hit RB here. Ends up being... Closer to Okonkwo. That's thankfully falls harmlessly incomplete. I like the shot there. I don't want taking a shot. On an early down. Bad snap. We're going to try to hit Shahid on the dig, and it nearly intercepted by Devin Lloyd. What a safety field goal. The screen on second down. Going off the back of Staley. 
And Sean Murphy bunting. Looking like he uh, got some pressure there. Good for him. It'll be third and four. Ringo doesn't even see... Evan Ingram on that play. Just doesn't react until the ball's already passed him. Monty Rice again and Clay Staley this time getting in on the pressure. The rookie with his first, I guess, half a sack. But Monty Rice again on the blitz. We found something there with him blitzing. He's gone to Trevor Lawrence twice now. He's going to play the sticks. Nothing over the top. Please do not get beat here. Going to be another screen. ETN's probably going to get it. Need Amani Hooker to save a first down, and he gets juked out of his shoes. Another second and long after ETN gets shut down on first down. We're going to force Lawrence out the side. Al Shire with the sack. Listen, our edge rushers made to get no pressure, but our off-ball linebackers sure can get to the QB with the best of them. I don't know why this is the case, but I'm not complaining. Really, 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 really need to come away with a stop here. Gonna be a handoff, so they're gonna basically just give up. We're gonna call a timeout to keep as much time on the clock as we can. Gonna be fourth and 20, and the Jags will punt. Didn't really want to waste 40 seconds there, but I also really didn't want to waste the time. That's going to be a phenomenal kick. Down at the three, Logan Cook pins us inside the five. What a punt. Need to get out of the shadow of our own end zone. We do, we do have two minutes to work with, so... Well, essentially two minutes. Minute 50. Actually going to try to bounce this outside as Trayvon Walker sheds instantly. I like the idea. I like the read, but just as soon as we did it, the block got shed. Which is kind of what you would expect to happen in that situation, but wish it didn't. And that's going to be a safety. I got to get the throw it. We're going to have to throw it over Foya Lulikun either way, but I like our chances of that better than running just up the gut again. That was probably a mistake. We just give them the ball right back. Jags moving the ball well up to the 40-yard line. And that pass nearly complete. Good defense by the rookie. Gallery. Darian Gallery, our final pick in the fourth round. Pretty sure we had picks after that. I don't remember. Yeah, we have we had like a seventh that we used on that fullback who would have caught a pass, but it ended up being a hold. Bait it. Bat it, whatever you want to say. A third and one gonna need another stop here. And that's going to be complete to Christian Kirk for the first. We're just bringing heat, really, for the rest of the quarter. Just trying to get them out of field goal range. That's my goal. Lawrence flush out of the pocket and forced to throw it away. Good pressure by Monty Rice and Clay Staley once again. Really, really good contain there, too. Held the edge. It's good defense. Once again, Lawrence flushed out to the right and throws it away again. Fantastic defense by the team. Unfortunately, not able to knock them out of field goal range, but we will hold them to just the field goal, which I'll take. Especially considering how this game started, so. It's been, it was touchdown on the first drive and field goals every other drive they've had. Unfortunately, haven't forced a punt yet, which would be nice. They've gotten points every drive, including one of our drives with a safety. That's how that works. But it's still technically a one possession game, and we will get the ball at halftime. So if we can manage to get into field goal range here, we're looking not bad. I doubt we'll be able to, but it doesn't mean we're not going to try. That is way overthrown. Hit as he throws. Intercepted. Levis gets absolutely clobbered as he releases that ball. It's picked off by Foster. Trayvon Walker. He got the ball out before the hit, but I guess the pressure just affected the throw. 
Wow, that was that's real bad. So yeah, that whole thing I said about getting in the field goal range and feeling pretty good going into the half. Yeah, nix that. We uh we fucked that up. And the Jags are right back in field goal range. Christian Kirk. And they're just gonna go right for it. It's gonna be a 53 yarder. Ish. 53, 55, something like that. And it is good. Iro Santos, as I'm now able to read his nameplate, puts it through the upright. Flag G, I wonder if it's a hold. Peter Skaronski this time. So three of our five starters on our offensive line have committed a hold in the first half. Sick. Trevor Lawrence been very good in the first half. Has had to deal with some pressure, but made the right decision most of the time. We will get the ball to start the second half, however. Chance to get back in this game. All we need is a touchdown and we're right back in it. Touchdown on a stop and we're looking real good. But that starts with the offense actually being able to move the ball or Cordero Patterson, you know, getting us really good field positioning up. Past the 25 to the 28. Get a chance there. Let's try to get Tajay Spears more involved in the second half. Just a couple carries for a couple of yards in the first half. Need more out of him. Or we'll get absolutely nothing out of him. That works too, I guess. Devin Lloyd is playing like fucking... I don't even know. Insert GOAT middle linebacker here. Ray Lewis. Sure. Third and 12. Really good start to the second half. And that's intercepted. Or it should have been. Mm. Mm. Oh man, what a awful start to the half. ETN out of the backfield and Harold Landry injured on the play. Holding his throw is probably going to be a bruise starting. That might be the end of the day for him. Evan Ingram nearly a first down again. We are getting ripped apart. That is going to be bruised ribs for Harold Ranch. We'll put James Houston in. Lawrence now second and one. Changing up the play a little bit. Going to be a handoff inside to ETN and he will get the edge and he picks up a huge gain. Brought down by Aziz Shair inside the 15. We are getting gashed right now. And it is not pretty. Ever since that Logan Cook punts that downed us at the three, that really changed the course of the game. It was back and forth. Our defense was hanging pretty well. Jags get the safety and get the ball right back. And uh, ever since then, we just haven't been able to do anything against them. Lawrence, incomplete. Had Kirk in the end zone. Had positioning on gallery, but thankfully the pass is incomplete. Going to bring up third and five. From the eight-yard line. That's going to be a slant complete to Calvin Ridley for the touchdown. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right. Second and 10. We're trying to hit Dwayne McGee here. His first catch of the day, I believe. That's for a first down and more. Yep, his first catch for, goes for 16 yards. First catch of his career. We'll try to hit him again. This time deep. He's a jump ball guy. Taking a shot. Ended up being double coverage. Probably not the right read, but we went for it anyway. Burks in motion now on second and 10. We'll try to hit him. And he holds on. Gets a couple yards. Springs up third and seven. A little bit more manageable. We're just going to put Shahid on an end here, on an end here and see if we can't get lucky. And just run. He ran into Devin Lloyd, dude. God, man. I wish the fucking players in this game weren't robots 
Because all our guy had to do here was just sit down, and he had the first. So I'm like, okay, maybe if I just get the ball to him now, things will work out. We throw to 89 here. I think it is a uh, rookie receiver. I'm like, if we just get the ball, if I get the ball to him, like, here, I think we're fine. But I held on to it for a second too long, and it ends up being, well, first off, just fucking unbelievably inaccurate. Like, it looks like you're throwing to fucking... Shahid more than it looks like you're throwing to 89, who I think is, uh, I forget his last name. Gonzalez. Yeah. Rookie receiver. He's huge. He's a receiver. Not a tight end. But, man. Third interception of the day for Will Levis. Or is that four? I think it's only three. Lawrence rolls out. It's his guy. It's going to be ETN on the check down. Picks up four. I really don't want this to turn into Rams franchise 2.0, where we're just throwing a million fucking interceptions, but... It looks like it's what's, what it's going to be. Huge hit! Monty Rice, he's played well today. Knocking that ball out, preventing the would-be touchdown. I don't like Al Shire in man coverage against Evan Ingram, so we're going to switch this up a little bit. We're actually going to make it a blitz if, since they're out of empty now. Not out of empty. All right, back to number three sky. I can call audibles too, clowns. It's, uh, dude. I tried. I'm pressing Y that entire fucking time, and it just doesn't do anything. It just makes him just sprint past. Like, I am spamming the intercept button. It's like, okay, I'm stepping in front. Why, 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 why? And then he just does this, like, little fucking... He just, like, sits down here and just doesn't even react. I'm spamming the Y button the entire time I'm walking in front of him because I know it's going to get thrown just right at me. I'm spamming the intercept button. And it doesn't let me do anything about it. 35 in. 3rd and 10 after a near sack throwaway and an incompletion. We're going to try to hit a cockle to see if we can outrun him. And he just runs himself out of bounds. Fourth and six. This is damn near just go for his territory because we're getting fucking killed. But inside our own 30, we can't. Third and five. Just need to get off the field if we can. Would love Jeremy Chin to fucking react to the ball being thrown right at him. He does not. Calvin Ridley first down. Like, what the fuck are we doing, guys? The ball is thrown right fucking at you knock it down do something that should have there should be an interception but uh, instead he just watches it sail right past them like i'm not gonna do anything about this etn big gain good defense by ringo there on the slant to prevent the catch no complaints there Gonna bring up third and eight. Stop here would be huge. And that's gonna be complete to Evan Ingram as no one is covering the middle of the field. Jags down to the five yard line first and goal. And that's easy in. We rank him it and we actually do bring him down. No gain. Monte Rice on the tackle. He's been awesome today. He's been our lone bright spot on, bright spot on defense. A sack and a half. Handful of tackles. Played well in the run game. He's been the only guy to show up. And he's also the lowest overall starter by a mile. So that's what you want to see. That's going to be the end of the third quarter. Let's see. They have 51 plays to our 31. And they also have nearly 400 yards of offense to our not even 200 so they're just completely controlling the clock out gaining us they're just killing us in every way imaginable it's been great slant cheese touchdown ridley oh my god we can't even get anything open it's, this is this is this is great. Our offense is stagnant. We looked really really good for one drive, and uh, everything after that has been abysmal. See so if we can hit Traylon Burks here. Try to get something going. 
That's been the only play that's worked so far is the slant to Traylon Burks. Second time we've hit him on a big slant. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna just try QB draw here. They have no one up the middle. And it makes him do the stupid fucking spin move. And all of that for no gain. Nice. Okonkwo on the streak. Another first down. Finally getting a little bit of something going through the air. It ain't much, but it's a start. One-on-one -on -one shot to our 6-5 rookie, and it gets knocked out. Darius Williams, good play. Really wish Darius Williams wouldn't be able to cover our 6-5 rookie receiver like that, but what are you going to do? Okonkwo was going to be wide open, but Devin Lloyd, who's, again, played like the best linebacker in NFL history today, gets in on the second to bring up third and 19. Burks wide open, first down. But we've had time to throw, and the balls have been accurate. We haven't been that bad, but those things have been very few and far between. In the red zone, once again, though, offense actually functioning like a decent unit here. Lev is going to throw it away as no one gets open on the slant. I really wish I could put McGee on a, on a, uh, I could put him on a slant and just like kind of play it as a post because this could be wide open. Or he's just going to get bitched off the line by fucking Andrew Wingard and Josh Allen is going to murder Will Levis. Bro, look how much open, look how much space is open over the middle. So I put my 6'5 physical archetype receiver on a slant, and he just gets bitched by fucking Andrew Winger, just completely bullied off his route. All right, dude. And nothing there. Daniel Brunskill, the only offensive lineman we have that has a good bit of hold, is down, and he's holding his leg, his Achilles. That's, that's not good. That's really not good. Fourth and 30. I'm just going to send everyone deep and just see if someone can get the fuck open. I don't know. McGee one-on-one. -on -one. That's going to be out of the back of the end zone. Jags ball. I love it here. Achilles sprain for Daniel Brunstall. At least it's only a sprain. Good run D there. Harold Landry. Brings down ETN. Our run defense hasn't been awful. Aside from a couple of huge plays. But this is essentially just a replay of the entire first season of Rams franchise where our defense was like playing well for the most part. Where we only gave up a few huge plays here and there. Like this is a big play we've given up. But it's just they're on the field for so long. We can't afford, you can't expect them to be able to hold, you know, an NFL offense, you know, the zero points when they're on the field pretty much the whole fucking game because our offense is like completely decrepit. Like, completely unable to do anything. Good defense there by Brandon Smith. Third down. Be a great time for a stop. Wrap up Jeremy Chin. Nice. We tried a little jailbreak screen there. Jeremy Chin able to force Christian Kirk out of bounds. And we will get the ball back. Or maybe we will uh, move the ball forward on offense this time. Can you please stop only calling verticals, dude? Like, I understand. We need to move the ball, but like... That shit never gets open. And that passes behind McGee and intercepted. Andrew Wingard pick six. Oh my god, dude. Andy Dalton now into the game completes a pass to Dwayne McGee for 14 yards. Just trying not to ruin Levis's confidence anymore than it already is. Burks drops a wide open slant. Wingard now is playing like the greatest safety in NFL history. He's absolutely destroyed us here in the last, I don't know, handful of plays.
Wayne McGee fighting for yards. Happy with his play so far today. Third and three. We're going to try a screen. And Antonio Gibson. Good blocking by the O-line. First down and a little bit more. McGee nearly lost the man. But it's once again Andrew Ingard. He's just impossible to throw on. Hit Shahid underneath. Picks up nine yards, and then I'll bring up the two minute warning. Andy Dalton playing pretty well, I must say. Can't get that pass over the linebacker, Foye Olulakun. We are not kicking a field goal down 39 points. I think you're the one that needs to go on a drag. We'll find out. No one open. Absolutely not a soul gets open there. That is the greatest coverage I have ever seen. I mean, the only thing close to open is the running back, but oh, the running back is obviously wide open. But yeah, we're really going to get the fucking first down with double linebackers. But bro. Just Josh Allen, by the way, running with fucking 80, 90 speed Jago Conquo like he's all right. Like he's a fucking corner. Huge TFL by Monty Rice. You know what? He's been a huge bright spot at the very least. We can we can be happy about that. Monty Rice Monty Rice looks awesome. In year four. This is like a 69 overall. Touchdown, Zay Jones. You guys want to know when I started spamming Y on this one? Right here. Right here. I'm on six spamming Y. It's spamming Y. And it holds... It, it, yeah. Well, that, that sucks. 56 to 10 is your final. We looked pretty good for the first quarter and a half. And... Then the rest of the game happened. Turnovers were the big problem, of course. Four interceptions for Will Levis. Trevor Lawrence was awesome. You know, you look at the uh, the yards, not bad. You look at the completion percentage, dog shit. You look at the interceptions, obviously bad. But yeah, Andy Dalton came in through 50% for 45 yards. I don't know. I hate it here. Uh, ETN killed us. Trevor Lawrence killed us. But uh, Ty J Spears, eight carries for four yards. That's, that's sick. Oh, and a fumble, by the way. So... You know, that's pretty cool. Receiving Traylon Burks had a good game. 5 for 90. Chico Conquo 4 for 60 in the touchdown. Wayne McGee 3 for 37. Shahid 3 for 54. Receivers, you know, put up numbers, I guess. Gibson caught a screen for 20. Edge Spears got a dunk down. Or for 10. Or for 20. Gibson had 10. You listen. I tried reading one before the other. Uh, Kendrick Thomas, whoever that is, our backup right guard. That's right, Daniel Bruskill. Got knocked out of the game. He gave up a sack. Nice. And then Terry Franks also gave up a sack. Defensively, Monty Rice was awesome today. He had 10 total tackles. Jeremy Chin with 8. 3 TFLs for Monty Rice. 2 for Clay Staley. 1 for a few other guys. And then a sack and a half for Monty Rice. 1 for Al Shair. 1 for Landry. And then half for Clay Staley. Of course, no interceptions because we're not allowed to react to balls being thrown right at us. Key to victory. Yeah, it's definitely not the fucking offense that didn't do dick. We should have gotten this win. No, we shouldn't have. We we there there was no world we were getting this win. Absolutely none. But let's just put that game in the rearview mirror mirror and never think about it again. But uh, you know, it, it's not like it gets any better because this week we have to play uh Justin Herbert. So that's gonna be fun. Wish me luck. I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Take it easy.